Uh, my name is Rudy Fang, as introduced by Zach. Thank you very much for the introduction. I'm the founder and CEO of the Central Asia and Southeast Asia Business Chamber. Today, I want to share with all of us here how we think blockchain can help to improve small medium enterprises businesses sustainably in Central Asia and Southeast Asia region. I have uh, quite a number of slides in the beginning to set a background of what we do. Uh, I will walk through those slides quite fast in the beginning, so please uh, bear with me. Thank you. As I am talking about uh, Central Asia countries, um, I'm not sure how many of us here know this region. The picture that I use in the title page is basically to introduce Central Asia. It has nothing to do with the blockchain business. This, this picture is the Soyuz M MS-18 spacecraft carrying Russian and American crew uh, in uh, Kazakhstan. So if you happen to visit Kazakhstan, uh, please visit this uh, interesting uh, Baikonur Cosmodrome as a, as a tourist. Uh, well, it is not normal to see space rockets in the blockchain event like this. Uh, let me walk us through my rather unusual slides, okay? And then I will flip the background slides uh, quite fast. Let's, let's start with this 13.8 billion years ago. This is the beginning of our universe. Uh, this is the genesis, right? Four and a half billion years ago, planet Earth was born. Yeah? 3.8 billion years ago, organism was born. Six million years ago, now this is important, human and chimpanzees took different path of evolution, right? And this is the starting point of human. The time since the beginning of the universe, in my other slide, 13.8 billion years ago, until when humans started to become human six million years ago, that's, that's a very long time that universe basically grew and survived without human being, right? Six million years ago. The universe started to change drastically because of human being. Two and a half million years ago, human early civilization started. Two million years ago, ladies and gentlemen, human species grew, right? Half a billion years ago, Neanderthals, the species that is quite similar to us now, evolved. 300,000 years ago, humans started important milestone, which is using fire. 200 thousand years ago our current species homo sapiens which is us evolved so our human history started here 70,000 years ago human became smart it is called cognitive revolution 45 years ago this is important and i put it in red color humans started colossal destructions we wiped out the entire australia megafauna we are destroying Earth, not from recently, but at least from 45,000 years ago. 30,000 years ago, we wiped out another human species that I mentioned earlier, the Neanderthals. 16 years ago, ladies and gentlemen, again, we wipe out the American megafauna. 13 years ago, another human species extinct. We, Homo sapiens, became the only human species on planet Earth. Ladies and gentlemen, for six million years, many plants, animals, and human species lived together, right? But not after that. So 12,000 years ago, second revolution started, humans started to settle, right? 5,000 years ago, kingdom, scripts, money, started very important money started 5000 years ago not too long ago not billion years ago right 4250 years ago the first empire started right 
2,500 years ago, ladies and gentlemen, this is also another milestone. Universal money, universal political order, universal the truth started. 2,000 years ago, Chinese Empire, Roman Empire, Christianity started. 1,400 years ago, Islam started. 500 years ago was very, very important. This is the third revolution in human history. Human became very, very powerful. 200 years ago, ladies and gentlemen, the third evolution started and again, human wiped out many plants and animals, right? This picture, ladies and gentlemen, show us that human achieve next milestone in shorter and shorter time. From first to second revolution, human needed 58,000 years. From the second to the third revolution, we needed 11,800 years. From the third to the fourth revolution, ladies and gentlemen, needed only less than 200 years. So we can expect that we may be able to achieve next revolution indefinitely shorter than 200 years, right? So we are growing smarter and smarter very fast, right? And this is what we see today. But I want you to notice the next picture, which is very important. And I put it in red. Being smarter, ladies and gentlemen, other than bringing a lot of good news, we human beings also bring a lot of side effects, right? Atomic bomb is another achievement, physical achievement, that now we, human being, we can kill the entire human being easily. Today is 76 years after 1945. If we can kill people easily 76 years ago, I'm sure we can kill 7 billion of people today, probably easier and faster than dropping atomic bombs. So human evolved for 6 million years. 76 years ago, we found a way to stop the evolution, right? We can do it. I want all of us to pause for a moment here. We have just seen how our universe evolved, how our human evolved, how human kill each other, how we kill plants, we kill animals. Are we surprised about global warming issue today? It's not surprising, right? Pollution issue is not surprising. Deforestation, not a problem. It's been a long time. War, terrorism, genocide, killing, raping, slavery. It's not a surprise. We, we must not be surprised at all because human being has been doing all of that for 6 million years. Human being is a native destroyer including destroying ourselves. Now, in this blockchain event, I want all of us here to make blockchain a good solution to human problems, not a destroyer, agree? We must be very conscious why we have problems today because our grandfathers and forefathers did what they did for 6 million years ago. As of now, human beings roughly know the root causes. We are smart enough to know it. Let's use blockchain to fix the root causes, not the symptom. Yeah. So what, what are our problems today, ladies and gentlemen? Look at this chart. We started the population zero at 6 million years ago. 300 years ago, in year 1700, there were 600 million people on Earth. 200 years later, in the year 1900, we increased to more than two times. A hundred years ago, in the year 2000, we increased 2.6 times. 19 years later, ladies and gentlemen, in 2019, we increased another 2.8 times. It seems that more laws that number of transistors in a chip double every two years apply probably better to human being than 
transistor, right? Certainly. By 2050, ladies and gentlemen, in 30 years from today, total population on planet Earth will be 10 million people. One big problem is how are we going to feed these people? Though today, there are 7.7 billion people, right? Number of poor people who live below US dollar 1.9 per day is about 10%. It's not a lot. It's only 700 million people. Oh gosh, 700 million people. That's a lot of people. It is more than 100 times of Singapore population. Right? But you can see from the slide that 25% of population today eat too much. They're not hungry at all. So look at this chart, right? Very interesting chart, yeah? And then, so the question is, do, do we really have problem with the food? No, no, we don't have problem with, with food production according to those smart people in World Economic Forum, right? So, so what is actually our problem now? This is the news that we hear every day today. Country A or country B does not have enough vaccine because they are poor. While many countries and people can't afford vaccine, I would say Mafia families make more money in black market today than probably ever. And of course, vaccine producers make tons of money nowadays. Ladies and gentlemen, better than vaccine producers, which people around the world make more money during pandemic because they have access to resources than poor people don't. So this is our problem. Small people lose, small company lose, small and medium enterprises lose. Not because they can't fight, but because the fighting arena is not fair for small people and small companies. This is the question that I want to ask all of us. Can we create a better world? Let's talk about SME now, right? Because we want to talk about SME. We can see that SME contribute 20 to 60% of local GDPs in countries. We contributed the remaining 40 to 80%. Okay, by actually big companies, MNCs, government companies. Yeah. SME employ 30% of people in Kazakhstan to 80% of people in Indonesia. Now, Indonesia is 265 million people, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in case you, you don't know. How many people are actually employed by big companies. It's, it's less than 10% in Indonesia, uh, up to 70% in Kazakhstan, certainly. So SME around the world face similar problem, very, very similar. Number one, lack of resources. Number two, lack of economics of scale. Number three, lack of network. Number four, increased competition from big companies. It's very important. Then lack of research and innovation not stable, and you can argue lack of entrepreneurship. So how are we going to support small and medium enterprises? Our business group is setting up Central Asia and Southeast Asia Business Chamber or KCBC in short, to help and support small people and small companies the SMEs, the students, the aspiring entrepreneurs, the startups. These are the small people. Our business group is also SME. We are also small people. We basically just want to unite SMEs in 16 countries to help each other so that we can compete with big companies. We want to do business sustainably. I, I think that's the point. Like big companies, okay? Now, it is 
very important uh, that that we have a big dream, right? Um, many people uh, who hear what I've just said about this big dream, uh, they they will call me a dreamer, right? So what we want to do basically, we say, okay, the the Central Asia and Southeast Asia uh, 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 will have a big dream. So so what is this big dream? So how are we going to do this? Yeah, and they are right, indeed. We have a 30-year dream, and we call it Dream 2051. By 2051, ladies and gentlemen, we want all members have enough food. Remember the food problem that uh, we discussed earlier? By 2051, we want enough clothing. Those who live in four-season countries, they can't live with just a piece of T-shirt, right? By 2051, we want to have enough housing. By 2051, we want to have enough health care. And we want to be educated. We want to become a self-learner. We want to become a lifelong learner, right? As you can see, we don't dream about making money or creating technology. Money and technology, although they are very important, but they are tools. They are not the end that we want. So, how are we going to do this in, in 16 countries? Particularly on blockchain that we are discussing today, we try to learn from anybody in the world. We learn from SMEs in Israel and Italy that deploy blockchain technologies and solutions recently. This is a 2019 data. We learn in which fields they use blockchain. We know that almost all of these companies are young and small. Am I right? We learn that permission blockchain is a good practice. We learn that blockchain can really help SMEs because it has features that can resolve SMEs main problems as we saw in earlier slides. The small guys with blockchain have better chance to compete with big companies. Ladies and gentlemen, blockchain as a service could be a key differentiator in SME business soon. So we learn all of this and, and after we learn all of this, we create strategy, right? So number one, this is what we are going to do. We will learn how to increase production by quantity and by quality, we want to create surplus. Okay. Once SMEs have surplus, we can barter the surplus with other needs. Remember our dream 2051 that we are talking about food, clothing, shelter, healthcare, and education. So we need all of these products and services, right? Strategy number three, when we do the barter, now this picture is very important. I, I, I think everybody would recognize that we don't use fiat money, right? We want to use our own currency, our own money in Central Asia and Southeast Asia business chamber. We will have Cassia dollars, stable coin, and we will have Cassia coin, which is the utility tokens, for instance. Yeah, just, just, just to mention, a sample. Strategy number four uh, is the database. We collect database, we process it, we analyze the data, we deploy machine learning and use artificial intelligence to make decision and action. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is just an overview how we visualize Cassia blockchain platform as a service. So in Central Asia and Southeast Asia, 
we basically want to create a consortium blockchain in 16 countries for small and medium enterprises. And as you can see, um, it, is, it is on also tool blockchain as we work together with uh, a band and the company. Um, but you can see that what we want to do uh, is not really different from what all you guys want to do anyway. As we all can see, we have big dream, right? It's the dream 2051. So ladies and gentlemen, we want to invite all of us here to collaborate, to help each other, to survive together, to grow together and to compete together with big companies. I just want to remind all of us again about our human history for 6 million years. We did many, many horrible things. We were destroyers for 6 million years, right? We killed plants, we killed animals, we killed other human species. We must fix it. We can fix it because now we are million times smarter than those human six million years ago. Blockchain must resolve human and business problem, not mathematics nor IT problems. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much and stay safe wherever you are.